Well, hello, everybody. I'm Erica Lukes here with Expanding Frontiers, a show dedicated to talking about important and relevant topics and also having a little bit of fun and exploring things. I'm, I've been doing this, this show in, in other versions for over seven years, and I love the fact that almost every Friday night I can get into chat and see people like Peter and, and Simon and Ken and know that other people, even though they're not in chat, have always been listening and supporting me in my work. That means a great deal to me. And there's a reason, you're the reason that I'm here every week. Um, and I really appreciate you. You can go to expandingfrontiersresearch.org to check out all of the latest work that we have been doing. My colleague and I, Jack Brewer, who has done amazing work over the years, we have released some pretty uh, big bombshells with regard to uh, cryptocurrency and Skinwalker Ranch. And uh, the latest piece about Joe Firmage, you definitely won't want to miss. So go in there to Expanding Frontiers Research and join so we can keep you updated on the latest blog. And if you like our work, please help us keep it going. You can donate to Expanding Frontiers and we appreciate that because it is a great expense to do this and to do FOIA requests, to take time away from our daily lives, to do the websites, et cetera, et cetera. And I also want to thank the people who have been supporting this show, the UFO Classified, my friends um, over the years. Thank you very much. I appreciate all of you. And it, this is truly a, just a fabulous uh, blessing for me. And hey, Drew and Renee and Amy, good to see you and Lisa and UAP Chinese balloon lover. Yes, <laughs> I love it. And thank you for saying Eric and Jack the Hammer of Justice. You know, we certainly try. We're having a good time. Um, and we have got a lot that we've been working on and we're looking forward to, again, dropping some more bombs because this is a really, really cool thing. Hey, Dina, how are you? B Baker, I want to thank all of you again. So I am here tonight with somebody who has not been on my show for like, what's it's been, what it's been years? Four years, four has years. Has it really been four years? Yeah, from the before times. Oh, the before times. I don't even know what that was like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's hard to remember sometimes. We sp spoke a different language. Things we were so vastly different then. And yet, <laughs> hey, and yet they're all still, everything's still the same. You know, it, I mean, it's, it's, that's so weird. And I wanted to say for people who don't know you, this is Smiles Lewis, Stephen Miles Lewis, but I'm much, I love the smiles, you know, it's just wonderful. And thank you, Lisa, for the super sticker, but you have had, you're, you're like I am, you love archiving and you have a beautiful archive. You've worked for years mm -hmm. at collecting things that people can learn from. And, you know, you've done a great job with your nonprofits. You are, you've had a lifelong obsession, just like I have, just like pretty much everybody that is listening to the show tonight. And you've loved UFOs, parapsychology, dreams, alt media. And in the 90s, you ran a group in, in, in Austin, the MUFON chapter, an experience support group, experience or supporter groups. In 2002, oh my gosh, if I could speak English, I would love it. 2003, he founded his life's work, the nonprofit Anomaly Archives. And then during the day, Smiles runs a studio producing audiobooks for the blind and print disabled. And I just think that's so cool. I look over, I was looking at your LinkedIn last night, not to be a creepy stalker. But <laughs> that's what it's there for. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's just, you've, you've, ha you've done so many things, you know, over your life and, and things that are really very altruistic and, and incredible. So I have to commend you for that. And I, I love the fact that, you know, you've been through so much archiving and then personally and you're still here and i just am really glad to know you well thank you erica i'm glad to know you too and um reflecting back on our uh friendship and uh and the last appearance and i'll repeat you know um uh i i i sincerely apologize for being a part of of some of the vitriolic uh online stuff that was going on back in 2015 um, over the silliness that was the Roswell slides and uh, wish that I had done more to uh, intervene in some of that. Um, but uh, I just, I think it's a tribute to your, your altruistic uh, spirit that 
that you were able to see past that and and reach out and and um, and have me on as a guest and and allow us to have these conversations about these subjects that we're so passionate about. Thank you. Thank you. That really that means the world to me. And I, it's been such an interesting process. I, I know having, you know, gone from being somebody that is, is, you know, I guess a true believer, somebody that went down rabbit holes and was, right. you know, when I got involved with MUFON, <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm, Hey, everybody loves MUFON. You know, I would, I wanted to just support and promote um, people because I, I genuinely, I genuinely like people. Maybe not today. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go to lock myself in the closet. But I think, you know, I, I just, I, I thought when I got into this, that this was something that we were all doing together. And this is, you know, and so it really took me back to have these experiences where it's like, whoa, I'm just trying to do the best I can. And, you know, this is happening over here or, or that. And I think, you know, the Roswell slides, I remember that was really funny because I had to obviously... I did the show for MUFON and the the director, um, well, Steve Hudgens, who was in charge of, of MUFON investigations at the time, and he was doing MUFON radio. He um, asked me to do the show, <laughs> the Roswell Slides show on MUFON, you know, radio. And I didn't really realize at the time, you know, I mean, I kind of thought, well, this is going to be really interesting. And I you know, I didn't realize that he was probably making, having me do the show because <laughs> he, he didn't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure, uh, Mr. Hudgens, uh, is, is, le is more interested, like a lot of the old school ufology folks, uh, the, the nuts and bolts, the, this, the old fashioned cra craft sightings and, and let, when, 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 when human witnesses start having feelings about and, and, and describe occupants or, you know, up close interactions, that's where so many uh, of the old timers are just like, Nope, Nope, Nope. That's not my bag. Um, and, you know, uh, there are those that argue that that's not even part of the true phenomena, but to me, it's like, that's, that's at the core of it, but I can see why some people specialize. Uh, but yeah, I think maybe he just sensed, uh, oh, this is this is a shit show. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a, this is a, some, this is not going to be go down very well. And maybe he was uh, putting you up as a human shield. Well, no, Steve, I'm not I'm not sh uh, throwing him under the bus, but maybe he threw you under the bus. You know, I'm kind of thinking so. And, you know, that's fine. I mean, I, you know, if, if Steve called me tonight, I would I would talk to him and just see how that spicy man is doing. But, um, <laughs> you know, I it, it was it was a great learning experience for me. And clearly ugh, and it I really tried to at that, you know, on that interview. And I wish it was still available somewhere, but I'm sure it was pulled down many oh, moons well, ago. It, but it, I would... it was a podcast, so there's copies of it everywhere. But oh, you just got to find it. And how, it's nice to see you from Norway. I just want to say, hey guys, and UFO John Doe. But um, yeah. So I, I, in fact, if you can, help, if you can give me ideas on where to find it, I would love that because that would be really, really dig, cool. I'll try to dig it out of the archives. Thank you. <laughs> um, but that for me, I was like, okay, here's Jaime, and here's this presentation, and and all of these things, and then I was noticing people that were talking you know, negatively about it and, and reached out to, to some, some of those people and, and tried to get both sides, <laughs> but it, it was, it was interesting. So, and I can understand from the place that I'm at now that looking at me even being involved in that, it's like, you, really? Okay. Seriously. I, you know, cause I look at the people now and, and they're getting involved in things and they don't know any better. And it can be frustrating to, to me as well, you know? And so it's, it's just an, it's been an, a learning experience and I, I would not stop. I would not, I would not go back on any of that. And I think it's, like you said, it's really cool that, you know, you're sitting here tonight, you know, that I can have Kurt Collins on the show and, 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 you know, just come to a place where we're moving forward because I think at the end of the day, all of us want the truth at least in this small circle. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that, that whole episode for me was, was, uh, an amazing experience. Um, being, uh, really just a fly on the wall, uh, of that, the, that Facebook group, the Roswell slides research group, RSRG, um, that was, uh, Kirk Collins and, and many others. And, um, 
um, you know, I, I did very little of the actual uh, uh, heavy lifting and work that was being done, but it was, it was an amazing experience, especially in those hours uh, as information was coming in and the de-blur of the photograph happened and, and it was suddenly like, wow, holy, holy moly. We, we were able to identify this and read the little placard that, that identified that, oh, this is just something from a, uh, a museum not some, you know, secret Awkward. hangar 18. Yeah. Um, but I, in some way, in, in some ways, I think it's a, exemplary for how a small group of people uh, can, can come together and, and do good uh, on the fly research and, and um, help uh, identify the unidentified. Um, but yeah, the, the, the social media uh, nightmare that that surrounded it um is just to me as i said previously is just indicative of of i think the negativity that is that is social media um and the as much as i think when we talked about anonymity before i didn't really mention the perspective that i the positive perspective that i think of i mean um i think anonymity on the internet has allowed many people uh, over the history of the internet to uh, be their truer selves in a better way. <laughs> but I think that all changed at some point as the tenor of civility in this country uh, changed. And um, that's that's where I think most of that uh, real negative uh, influence comes comes into play. But but yeah, people <laughs> need to rein their 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 egos in and their their troll take off those troll hats and uh, well, yeah. that could really ruin it for some people. Yeah, well, you know. I mean, you know, some people just wake up in the in the morning and think today is a great day to troll. And right. I mean, yeah, uh, there's I mean, there's there's so many stories of of uh, horrific abuse literally driving people to suicide, and um, that's there. What can you do about that? I mean, obviously, you can you can try to punish people and and uh, really try to try through legislation and, and le uh, legal uh, uh, efforts to, to 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 show that that will not be tolerated and is not acceptable social behavior. Um, and I'm sure by <laughs> even approaching that idea, I have just enabled a whole bunch of uh, troll troll army that will come after me now. So. No, I mean, it's luckily for me, I, I, I've never, well, who am I kidding? That I, very few people like troll the show. At least I don't pay attention when I, you know, they're posting comments on YouTube or whatever, but um, we've got a pretty good group here. Good. But, yeah. you know, I want to bring, and this is something that we don't talk about, and you bring up a really exceptional point. When you've got people clearly that are influenced by social media and are being bullied and and stalked via social media have we done anything in the ufo the quote-unquote ufo community to stand up to that when other people are being uh bullied and harassed no um i very little if if if, if anything and uh, i mean the example of of your own experience uh from 2015 is is a prime example and you know for some people it's just an it's just an opportunity to um, uh, for them to flex their misogynistic uh, uh, tendencies or get their their jollies on on people's uh, pain and suffering, um, it's it's hard to understand what really could be behind the, the worst aspects of that. But I don't. I, there's it's 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 so hard to find any non UFO community uh, efforts in that. I mean, obviously there 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 are real world efforts. Um, but they're all, always sparked by some terrible uh, incident. And um, I think it's, it's, this is something I know that you've uh, 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 spoken to a lot in, in, in uh, interviews with your guests and this idea of trying to protect people from becoming victims. Um, uh, and because there's just, there is this long history, you know, of, of people going off the deep end. And I don't, I don't know that, I, th I think that there is an aspect of, of the phenomenon itself uh, that 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 can push people to that, and that's because I mean this this is all about belief. As much as people might want to try to use science to rationalize their own belief system, um, uh, one way or the other, about the nature of the of the phenomena, it it's 
it, it can easily lead uh, researchers, experiencers uh, to, through Chapel Perilous, through a dark night of the soul, through uh, a hell and back. And, um, you know, that, you know, the, 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 this field has its share of, of suicides, of course, always surrounded with controversy and scandal and, and, uh, conspiracy theory. Um, and, um, you know, I, I remember reading early on, uh, John Keel, uh, one of the, uh, in my view, preeminent, uh, old school UFO paranormal journalists, um, who, wrote uh, about how many people really never made it through Chapel Perilous because of these experiences. And um, and whether it's the ridicule factor for experiencers who, you know, are afraid to talk about their experiences because people will deride them and, and label them and um, or, or even in, in actual past cases lose their jobs because of espousing their interest in these subjects. Thankfully, that seems to be less now, and and many people attribute it to the the the, the two, 2017 OSAP ATIP psyop, um, <laughs> uh, or whatever you want to believe that is. Um, it's you know I, I do feel like there is a there has been a lessening of the laughter curtain. There has been a a, a lessening of the ridicule factor. Um, <clears throat> a less likely use of of X Files or Twilight Zone music uh, on news That's broadcasts. True. Um, I mean, I still occasionally hear it, but it's not. It doesn't seem like they just immediately go to that. Yeah, yeah, that's um, true. Uh, but you know, uh, whether you're a researcher and experienced trying to grapple with the strange uh, double bind of the phenomena, the the strange uh, paradoxical nature of it, uh, the the trickster nature of it. Uh, the deceptive aspects of it that sometimes seem to, or predominantly people think of, you know, the deception coming from the human realm and the form of governments and, and hucksters and con men. Uh, but uh, many, uh, 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 a, to my estimation, respectable researcher has posited that there seems to be something at the heart of the phenomenon itself. And, but maybe that's just our inability to, to grapple uh, effectively with a true uh, anomalous unknown other. I mean, if, if there is an alien other consciousness at the heart of the true UFO phenomena, um, you know, it, it stands to reason that if it's so much more advanced than us, you know, on the one hand, you could, you could argue that, well, it's so much more advanced than us, then it must be able to understand us and, and communicate as effectively, uh, more effectively than we communicate with each other. That does not seem to be the case from what we've seen. Um, and it, 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 to me, it just goes back to the, just the simple idea that this is just a very uh, uh, biased filter, and that's it's this this hallucinating hallucination generating machine on our shoulders uh, does the best that it can, and a lot of times it overloads and comes up with crazy stuff that may be seeded from the phenomenon itself. Uh, you know, Greg Bishop and others uh, talk about the co-creation aspect. Uh, you know, to, to what degree in close encounters does the phenomena create the imagery or is it just purely the result of our own unconscious expectations and biases? Mm -hmm. um, I can go either way. I, I mean, when I think that when I'm entertaining the possibility that, that there is a true uh, alien intelligence behind uh, some of this, these encounters, um, uh, I, I, I think it's probable that there is a, a, an element of its uh co-creating it or rather it's 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 uh, uh creating some of the imagery um that's involved and i and by imagery i'm not trying to say that the experience is a hallucination per se but i do think that there's a very psychological uh, element to it um but yeah let's let's start the anti-bullying campaign <laughs> and ufology um um you know, I mean, and I would, I mean, I, as much as I would, I've tried to do that over the years, I think it's like, for me, I've just had to step back and like, I rarely post on, I mean, I will not get onto UFO Twitter. I just, no, it's not healthy. It's not run by adults. It's not, it's just really um, not a good thing. And, and, and where it even came from is, you know, questionable. So let's make sure we're funneling everybody into one place and see how everybody reacts. Sounds good to me. Um, but I, I do, you know, it is nice to see that the people that listen to my show and people like yourself, I mean, that is, is something that they wouldn't 
put up with. And, and, um, and I, I think that's great. I think we're in a period of time, especially right now where we need to be conscientious of other human beings. And we need to, instead of just stepping back and not taking responsibility for what's happening to ourselves and, and other people, we need to step up and do the right thing, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's that, I mean, and I know it's hard. I know it's very uncomfortable to do it. And I know it takes a little extra work and gosh, you might be, you know, exposed to people who are coming at you. But at the end of the day, it's like, do your due diligence. I mean, do what you need to do to make this world a better place. And if that's standing up for other people that are being victimized, then do it. You know, I don't know. That's just me. That's obviously a very, <laughs> you know how I feel about that, but yeah. we'll see. Yeah. I don't know. But so I want to, let's, let's get back to, let's talk about you. So I want to know everything that you've been doing since we talked. So you've got four years to cover. <laughs> You're on the spot. <laughs> well, um, so uh, let's see. So when we last talked, um, we had been in our, the Anomaly Archives, a 501c3 nonprofit uh, that I founded in 2003 had uh, been in its new location for just just about a year. So it was January 2019. I think we moved in about a year previous uh, and it was this is the first really significant location that we had uh, managed to move into. Um, we'd been at two other locations over the years that were uh, we were that well that were just much more smaller and uh, more um, uh, homey, we'll say. Uh, <laughs> But this was this was a really fine facility um, uh, with a, a space to grow into. Um, things were really looking up. Uh, we were having uh, the most success we'd ever had in terms of we had we had an on-site event space, and so we were trying to hold more events, and we had vo more volunteers than we'd ever had. Um, we uh, I, I think in our last interview. I was mentioning that our, our largest at that time and still uh, the largest donation that we've ever received from um, from the uh, estate of, of Bob Gerard, who was a rare book seller uh, and collector. Uh, we were still after having received it several years before, we were still unpacking it and cataloging it. Um, and we finally uh, were able to finish unpacking and, and cataloging that. And I think when I last was on the show. I think I was saying we had over 3000 uh, books in the collection. And um, as of now, uh, or for the last couple of years, we've had over 7,000. Wow. Um, and so we pretty much doubled that, uh, uh, what we had four years ago. Um, of course, uh, 2019 uh, went by really fast. And before we knew it, uh, the apocalypse was upon us. <laughs> and uh, yes. um yeah. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll never forget, uh, um, on a, I think it was like Friday, March 13th, Friday, 13th, March, 2020. Um, I met for the first time, uh, a young, uh, um, experiencer and researcher, uh, NK Cranda, Nikita Cranda oh, yeah. uh, from San Antonio. And she had come up and to visit the archive. And so it was our, our first time meeting and, um, got to show her the archive. And <laughs> that was when the universe changed. It was, it was that weekend. It was like, I go, went back to the day job the next week and it's like, everybody go home. <laughs> <laughs> and don't come back until this is all over. Um, and so, uh, unsurprisingly, the uh, the we we had to shut down. Uh, we closed to the public. The building that we were in became uh, harder to get into for for the public. Um, uh, and boy, uh, yeah. So uncertain of what to do. Uh, and the rise of the Zoom nation, uh, we did what everybody did. We pivoted to online uh, presentations and started trying to do our meetups in person. Um, and it was pretty, like I say, things were really going good. I mean, I remember our, our board meeting in February of 2020 was the best board meeting ever. We had more people there. It just had so much more energy. Uh, we, there's a, we'd gotten an infusion of some young folks that were going to start volunteering and it just, everything just seemed like it was coming up roses. <laughs> that should have been the first warning sign to, <laughs> to pay the insurance bill. <laughs> you never know. Um, but, 
uh, yeah, so we pivoted to online and started doing online meetups uh, and events that way, experimenting with this new medium um, and discovered the, the benefits of it, uh, the good things about it, being able to reach people and have people participate from, from further away than, you know, you didn't have to be in Austin to come participate in something with the Anomaly Archives. Um, and then, but by that point, our, we knew our lease was going to be up, uh, in, um, when was it? Yeah. By the end of the, the year that we were, it was going to be our third year. Uh, and we, uh, assumed and <laughs> hoped that we would be able to sign another lease and continue to, to be successful there. But uh, like everybody else, um, the, the landlord that was a nonprofit um, and who mostly rented to nonprofits like us uh, merged with a not so um, uh, a, a not unknown nonprofit, the, the local YMCA chapter, who at, at that point during the pandemic had laid off like 30 or 40 percent of their own staff. Oh, wow. Um, and yet they so they merged with the nonprofit that we were housed within and they needed more space so they stopped renewing leases and so and it was nothing personal it wasn't like they were kicking out the weirdos it was right. just uh uh pe i mean there were other charities that had been there longer than we had and as soon as their their uh lease was up they're like sorry um they were very nice they let us hang out for a few more months as we tried to find a new location um and but so this and this all unfolded at the end of 2020 um, during which we started doing uh, a really fantastic uh, event. We'd never done anything like this, but we did a we did a emergency streamathon fundraiser, whereby uh, over the course of six weeks, every Saturday, we did eight to ten hours of live uh, online UFO paranormal oriented uh, streaming content for free begging for money. <laughs> uh, and we were trying to raise uh, a modest amount, which was about $20,000, which is our, was our annual budget at the time. Uh, the vast majority of which was rent right. um, and with no paid staff and uh, a little bit of money to, to try to get new materials. Uh, if they, you know, what, what it wasn't donated, we would occasionally uh, try to, to, to purchase or at least pay postage um, uh, from people who were donating it. Uh, we continued uh, acquiring new collections. Um, Bob Durant, we received uh, uh, materials from the Bob Durant collection. Very cool. Um, uh, I was just reflecting, uh, we lost, I guess, last month, uh, one, was it Chickadee from the Aviary? Or Chicken Hawk, I forget. Uh, C.B. Scott Jones is a fairly legendary fellow uh, who corresponded with the Rockefellers and who was very much, I think we, we worked for Senator Claiborne Pell. Mm -hmm. Wait, was that the right Senator? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, um, yeah. Yep. And um, uh, he passed away, but we'd, we'd had him speak at a, a, a an event years ago uh, for the Anomaly Archives. And um, um, lo and behold, he's, he's donated his collection, thank goodness, uh, to, I think, Colorado uh, yeah. yep, University in right. Boulder. Yep. Um, and, um, where was I going with this? <laughs> oh, so I just recently was like, uh, I saw that Bob Durant had written uh, an article, uh, essay back in the day called, will the real, uh, CB Scott Jones, please stand up. Right. And, and when I was looking into this, I discovered that, oh, wow, the CIA has a copy of that Bob Durant paper. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, but yeah, not, it doesn't mean anything. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, we'll ascribe our own meaning to it. Um, but uh, yeah, so we, we did this fundraiser uh, over the course of six weeks and it was amazing. It was quite an achievement for, for us. Um, we, and we, we did manage to raise just over half of our goal. So we raised about, uh, I think it was, I think we raised exactly $11,111 because there was one donor who was like, I've got to see all those ones. Uh, but <laughs> Um, uh, we didn't raise the full amount, which would have been better, but that was the most money we'd ever raised. And that, uh, you know, so that I, I credit that to be a success. Um, but it was in the middle of doing that event when, uh, we were asking the landlord, so let's renew that lease. And they said, guess what? Nope. So we uh, frantically started looking for a new location. And uh, the sad fact is we are still looking for a location. They let us stay there for a couple more months. 
Um, and then uh, some of y'all uh, may have heard about the, the the crazy power outage in Texas in February of 2021 that we all kindly refer to as the snowpocalypse. Right. Um, uh, that w was right after that snowpocalypse that we uh, moved all of those seven plus thousand oh items into storage and they wow. have uh, been sitting in storage for two years now. And that is not, for want of trying to find them a new home. Um, but uh, some of you may know something about Austin that it's ridiculously expensive to live here right. and there is no affordable anything. No. And cheers. Um, cheers. <laughs> Friday night. <laughs> um, and so uh, we, we have been just struggling to uh, continue uh, our operations in some form. Uh, hey, Wes H. Um, and so we, uh, you know, we had before the, the streamathon, we had started doing a weekly news roundup show called Anomaly Now, uh, where me and a co host who uh, became a board member, Mark Jackson, um, uh, would do a, a weekly 30, 40 minute uh, news roundup show, sometimes longer. We used it to promote the streamathon. And then we continued it after the streamathon. But um, in the in the wake of of shutting down the physical location um and just a, a series of personal challenges tragedies uh that happened that year um really I, I, we stopped doing the show um i just i couldn't i couldn't do it um it was just it's too heartbreaking and yeah it's just been like i think i said <laughs> off air wait, waiting through grief um um, and you know, all the while knowing, you know, I've got it so much better than so many people out there, but you know, that still doesn't change the fact that I, I, you know, just been dealing with the, 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 my life's works languishing, um, the, the collection that I think is, is so significant and, and could benefit so many being unavailable to the public. Um, and, um, while, <laughs> All the while that <laughs> UFOs are going gangbusters in the media, like, <laughs> um, uh, so uh, just so we we basically we didn't do we didn't do the show for like another year uh, plus, and it's only just been uh, January of this year that uh, we we resurrected the the anomaly now show and um, have started doing that again, trying to do it every week, um, uh, which is, as you know can be a challenge some some weeks. Yes. And um, so we're just we're still hot on the trail of uh, trying to find a, a place that we can afford and to get into and that has everything we need, but or even really just that we can afford. Uh, let's just start there. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I still am optimistic. And one of the most amazing things that has happened in, in, in the time since since we spoke and, and the period that I'm describing. So in. Um, in early 2020, I guess before the pandemic lockdowns, um, I had gotten wind of an amazing development in the world of academia that uh, I think is is the other half of the massive sea change that we are seeing uh, in the world of UFOs, UAP. I only will use UF, UAP if, if you use the A as anomalous and not uh, uh, aerial or whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> unidentified anomalous phenomena because i like anomaly um so uh w back in in uh early march late 2019 early 2020 i had gotten wind about uh rice university creating a new archive of the impossible uh through the the uh, uh leadership of uh religious studies scholar jeff kripal um, uh, Diana Pasolka helping uh, get donations, and suddenly I discovered that wait a minute, they got Whitley Strieber's uh, communion letters, and they got uh, Jacques Vallée's collection, and they got Richard Haynes's collection, and just all these amazing, like just you know, pillars of of ufological history. Whether you love them or hate them, I mean, these people have been at the center of of these uh, this amazing story, and I just was overwhelmed with joy at the at the fact that wow a mainstream university is starting it's not just in their special collections like so many other universities it's it's its own archive and it's in a stem 
science, technology, engineering, mathematics university, Rice University in Houston, Texas. And so, yeah, a little jealous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, and to me, I think that's, you know, I mean, that's great. I find it very fascinating that, you know, people like Jacques Vallée and now I, I've just heard uh, Leo Sprinkle, they're putting time limits on when the public can access their their work, which I think is completely ridiculous. But that's just me as I, you know. It, it's not unusual in, in the, 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 in the archival world. Um, and, but I, I, sh I share your frustration because of course, uh, reading, you know, I just got whoop, volume five. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> thick enough to stun an ox. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, it, it in one of the, uh, I guess it was volume four, uh, or volume three, one of them, he, he alludes to documents that he came across and I'm like, oh my God, are those, are those in the archive? And I'm like, I want to go see them. And then that's when I hear 10 year moratorium. Um, uh, yes, very frustrating. Um, and not, not every collection is that way. It just, it, it depends on, on, uh, the, the collection, um, you know, MUFON, you know, when they started offering, uh, their archives, their, their, or rather when they think they took on Leo's, is it, uh, sprinkle, no, no, not spring, uh, Stringfields, yeah, yeah. uh, uh, crash retrieval type stuff. Um, uh, the, the rationale being that a lot of his sources were alleged whistleblowers and, um, you know, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> hey, at the very least, you know, like with the communion letters and stuff like that, you, you, th th those are open. They were too lazy to scan them. What's I mean, that? They were too busy selling hats and merchandise to scan the, the, the I mean, God. Ugh. anyway, inside voice. You, well, <laughs> I, I believe me, you know, I, I, I have no short, I have a long list of critiques uh, for the MUFON, the MUFON, uh, the, the Muffin Man. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I have mixed feelings about it, but I understand it. Uh, again, I, I am not a librarian, but I, I've worked in libraries all my life and I, and that is not that unusual. And, and when you're dealing with, again, stories, often personal information is often in these and, and the per the people often are sending these in, in confidence. And, you know, at the very least there has to be the, the, the archive and who are acting as the repository have to, CYA. They have to cover their butts so that they don't get uh, in any legal trouble on the on the part of the the people whose names might be in there. Um, but yeah, and you know what's I, so interesting? Like I, you know, I'm I'm five minutes away from the University of Utah Special Archives, the uh, Marriott Library, and they have um, Frank Salisbury's work. And I mean, just the most, just it's an incredible uh, place. I love spending a lot of time there. And I was talking to the one of the, the people that was. Uh, one of the former uh, curators and, you know, I had asked them because I'm just like, okay, I mean, I, I'm, ar I'm archiving, I'm trying to do things. What is acceptable for people? And, you know, is there, because of the copyright or the, not the copyright, excuse me, but the, the names and personal information has been something that we've talked a lot about uh, in the UFO world. Well, we've got to wait till, you know, 2050 before we can release specific things. And, and he, he just said, if this, this archive is is coming to us. If these files are coming to us, we have an obligation to be transparent. Hmm. And so I thought that was really interesting. And I'm actually looking forward to at some point in time getting up there and, and interviewing him because he did so much oh, great, for many, many great. years. So I think that'll be good to have that perspective. And I, I wonder, you know, like as far as the time limits on, on the ufological stuff if if valet and i know you're a big i know you like him a lot you've respected <laughs> him for many many years as do many people but if he had things in there that couldn't be seen because they were potentially like what classified documentation like what was the the rationale um i believe the rationale he's given is uh he's I think he's he, he, I think he's been quoted as saying that he doesn't want to deal with the 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 controversy that could erupt over some of the things. Um, um, I I'm not sure. It's been a while since I I read anything about that. Um, but it's 
It's interesting. I mean, there there are archival standards, and obviously the, there's different implementation of those standards, and uh, every place is going to be a little different. Um, and I think uh, with with certain assets that are donated, the the institution is is going to bend over backwards to like, oh, well, those are your those are your uh, your uh, requirements. Okay, because like, they want to get it. Um, uh, but the, 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 the event was originally supposed to happen in 2020. It didn't happen until, um, uh, March of last year. Um, uh, when I had reached out to them after discovering them in 20, in 2020, um, struck up a, a conversation with one of the archivists there and, uh, they had invited me to, 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 to come to the event. And then of course it got canceled and postponed. And then, but I did, I was uh, honored to be on a panel, uh, at, at the launching of it uh, last year in March. Um, it was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I mean, um, I, I just felt it was, it was just such a mind blowing experience to be at a mainstream institution that was just going, you know, above and beyond in, in, uh, the presentation, the, the quality of, of the, the, the venue, the quality of the speakers and just the quality of the work of what they're doing. Um, and, uh, it was what, like three or four days worth, uh, of, of lectures. Uh, it was all, it was completely free. Um, it was, uh, uh, available online. Um, so it was a hybrid event. Um, and it was just it was phenomenal uh, and got to meet people that I had never met in person for the first time, even though uh, I, you know, corresponded with several of these folks. Um, so it was just that, that was that was the, really the high point uh, of 2022 for me. And um, so and they're doing it again uh, in a month or two. Uh, it's, uh, of course, and I think it's just going to be try to they're going to try to uh, make it a more regular event. And um, I believe everything is still again, it's a hybrid event free for online or, 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 or in person. Um, and it's just it is not like your traditional UFO conference. I mean, there's there, uh, there wasn't a vendor's room, so you didn't have your UFO belt buckles and, and alien chocolates. Uh, uh, I, what, what are you going to do? I don't know. I'm going to be jonesing for all, all the, the kitschy circus of it all. Um, but, um, yeah, it was, it was really amazing. And that was where, uh, I finally got to meet, uh, Klaus Svahn from, uh, Sweden, AFU, the archives for the unexplained, which was one of the inspirations, uh, for my forming of the anomaly archives. And yeah, the biggest competitor of all of us in the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I mean, I want to talk to you about that because we, I think we're, you know, we're each trying to do our own thing. And I think there's no, there shouldn't be just one place because let's get really look at a place like AFU that's been around since the seventies. They had government, they had government funding, you know, they had a team of people. I mean, just working tire tirelessly on this. They had what, five warehouses that they could store things. Um, but then you've got, you know, all the, the research here in America and I mean, what are your thoughts about siphoning things into one location? Um, well, you know, I would love to have that, <laughs> their collection. <laughs> um, so, you know, I mean, I, I really, I, I, I'm, I'm so jealous of, of, of AFU and, uh, archive or, and, uh, the Rice University archives. Um, I, and I, I'm, I'm jealous of anybody who's got a significant collection, but, and to me, it's, it's like what the nature of the, the internet was supposed to be is decentralized. And I think, I think a decentralized, uh, archive would be better in some ways. I mean, I, and, and obviously, uh, more and more of this material is being digitized and that makes it more freely available from all those different locations. And you can have the physical, uh, copies in, in various locations. So I'm, I'm all for building bridges and networking and trying to, uh, increase that interconnectedness. Um, yes, I, 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 um, I feel that same kind of sense of frustration at the idea of, uh, the various countries history in the form of these the archives of different researchers uh, and, and seekers and experiencers and witnesses all going out of country, out of their locality. Um, this is, 
you know, when, when people approach me about um, uh, donating their material to the Anomaly Archives, I, I try to be as transparent and honest with them as I can, especially given our current situation. Right. You know, um, you know, the, the fact is we are not a, a big university. We do not have a current currently a, a permanent physical public uh, accessible location. Um, and so I tend to try to just say, here are your options. And, you know, is there something, is there something that's nearby that appeals to you more? And, and with individual collections, I mean, so often is the case is, okay, well, where does Hynek stuff go to? Well, you know, he was a professor. Well, what does that, the, the university that he was a professor at, do they, are they interested in his material? But it, it to me, it comes down to the interest of the stewards more than anything. Um, if, if, again, if it's just going to be relegated to the special collections, uh, of of some of of some you know i don't want to say podunk but just you know some uh, <laughs> some miscellaneous uh, right. university um you know that you know that's not that's not terrible because at, at least they pro they almost certainly have the infrastructure to to uh correctly preserve it for the long term and to assumedly make it available to people who come with an interest uh, in, in researching it. Um, I, I was listening to one of your, your uh, interviews where you talked about what you just mentioned uh, again, uh, going for days and looking through the, the Salisbury files. And, and that's the thing is some of these collections are so voluminous that, I mean, you really can get lost in them. And that is just so amazing and so great that they can, uh, that those exist. Um, one of the things that we do at the anomalyarchives.org website is we have a list of other archives and, it's, you know, I know it's not the, uh, comprehensive. It's the best I, you know, I, I just try, whenever I learn of one new one, I just try to add it in. And so it's an ever growing list of these, you know, here's See, where this Thank you. Stuff. I mean, I think um, that's really nice. And to me, that's the way we should be. I mean, I, I see sometimes it's like an, an ego grab, you know, it's like everybody, okay, I've got to sweep up everything. And, and in reality, maybe there isn't funding allocated to do the scanning. Maybe people can't, you know, get out to specific places. And at some point in time, a university isn't going to want to take everybody's material. Let's just get real about that. There are many yeah. other <laughs> things that they'll uh, be uh, storing. Um, but I, so to me, to have people like yourself who cares and knows the subject, who, you know, for me, I, when I, you know, with the Druffle things, I, I care about letting people know about her. Mm -hmm. Every time I hold a document in my hand that I know three or four people have seen, it is a really special thing to me. And the people that have donated to my archive over the, the years have that, I mean, every time I get, you know, pallets of, of things, it's really humbling and it means something to me. It's not yeah. just like, okay, you know, here's, here's another collection and ho, 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 you know, I'm master of the universe and, look at me. And, and so I, you know, I respect that about you. And I respect the fact that you want to, to network and try to give other people props who are doing the same thing. I think that's really important. I mean, I'm, I think if you've done a tremendous job over the decades and, and I, you know, I mean, I appreciate what you've done and I think that we do need to work together. And I think, you know, for me having interest in, like, I, I'm very, much about the communications between different researchers, mm. you know, so it's, for me, it's not so much about a sightings case where I think most UFO researchers, quote unquote, would throw out the correspondence That's and throw the out all of the stuff. personal, you know, I mean, yeah, exactly. And all of the, the, the things that make the person a person, you yeah. know, like with Heineck, it's like, okay, are we going to, are we, you know, do you want, I don't know. Do you want to, keep a myth and a legend alive for the sake of the subject or do you want to represent a man and his work and let people be open to their interpretations i don't know yeah yeah I, you know I, and i will say there's there's bound to be uh gaps created at any point by uh of the process of of preserving these legacies because without going into detail we've had at least you know one collection where um the 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 widow of the um person whose collection was being donated was very concerned about certain material from that 
from her husband's uh, late husband's co collection that she just was not going to send to us. And, 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 and it, and I was, it was, I knew it was correspondence and, and I, and it wasn't that they weren't, she wasn't sending any of it. It was just that she was going through it, looking for anything that she thought might, uh, if, if gotten the wrong hands cause trouble. Right. And this is kind of, this is where I, I think of what I think Valet uh, and others sometimes are getting at when they're, they're afraid of like, you know, but that, and the irony of course being that Valet has, as I was showing, you know, he's been putting out his curated uh, uh, diaries. And, and I think that those in and of themselves are an amazing archive of, of, of one man's thinking at the time and, and conversations that he had and the origins of, of so many different ideas uh, over the years and, and little bits of information. And, um, but yeah, you know, I, when I, when I met Klaus, uh, last March, I, I didn't know what to expect. And I, you know, again, my <laughs> trying to not let my, my jealousy, uh, or my, my sense of frustration at like, again, the, why did the Swedes get all of our stuff? Right, right. Um, uh, I mean, cause literally like I, I, there's been multiple collections from, uh, notables in the UFO scene who I know that the collections went to this person and then they went to this person and then, and then they went to AFU <laughs> and it's like, like at least and in at least one case, I'm like, you know, I had been keeping, you know, the log of, of this, this directory of, of, of Oh, so-and-so's collections at this place and over in Oregon, you know, and it's like, Oh, Nope, it's not there anymore. Guess where it is. Oh, dear. <laughs> but uh, I will say I, I was so, I was so pleased to meet Klaus. He was, he was nicer than I ever could have imagined. Um, uh, and, and I, we had such great conversations and um, I just was, Oh, we, we spent quite a bit of time together and, you know, we just, it's one of those things like at these kinds of conferences, you know how it is when you hang out with somebody there, you really get to know, know them and you, you get to, you, you talk about all kinds of things and, and just get, you can learn so much. Um, and I will say he, he, <laughs> He's uh he he certainly um I don't know what the right phrase is, but uh he very much enjoys his work of, of collecting this stuff and oh, sure. and has some of the most amazingly crazy stories about like for years where he's you know slowly whittling somebody down to eventually <laughs> donate their collection. And, into submission. And, That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So um <clears throat> but you know, I, I was just lamenting with him, you know, uh, do do our archives have a future you know what mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. um you know i i know that uh i know that they they seem to have done so well and yet i you know i, I and i i think of them as like well they're 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 solid they're they've got a really good solid foundation there's no chance that they'll go away but you just never know no, and, you don't. Um, and, and I want to just say really quickly, and I'm sorry please. to, to oh, well, um, you know, we're, we're, I don't want to go back a little bit to the fact that, you know, we're not mentioning people, we're concerned about correspondence and things. Yet, interestingly enough, Dr. Haynes' collection at Rice University is openly available for people to see. And guess whose name is in there? Guess who's, you know, I mean, I believe there's some personal correspondence of mine in there and Ted Rose and, and things. And that was something that, you know, I know that Ted did not give permission uh, to Ted was Ted is the executive director of NARCAP and had a right to those materials and, and there they are. And, and so if, you know, I, where, where are those boundaries? You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, to no, me, no. it was just like, Okay. Well, yeah. I, on the one hand, I, you know, I'd be an advocate for, uh, was it possession is nine tenths of the law as far as like, you know, so here, if, if I would say like, if there's a board member, um, and, and the, the material that's relevant to the board that they serve on is, is in some ways I would, I would imagine that that would be considered kind of separate. And yes, I would imagine that the, the members of that board would perhaps be like, well, we'd rather that material reside with us, but that's something that they would have to negotiate with the, the, the estate. And, um, and this just gets to, let's, let's talk about estate planning. <laughs> <laughs> everybody you know and I, I this is so morbid but i mean it's again we're all gonna die folks so like you know make your plans now and try to uh, establish a plan for how to preserve the legacy of the materials that you've amassed if they mean anything to you they probably mean somebody something to others like our like us 
Um, and I, uh, we're, we're right now we're waiting on uh, a, a new collection, um, uh, that the, the ex-wife of the person, um, they were still friends and he, he died unexpectedly and, but they had already had an arrangement where, uh, she'd agreed to take care of the distribution of, of, uh, his various collections, one of which was his UFO and paranormal co uh, collection of, of books and, and pro conference proceedings and that sort of thing. Uh, and this person wasn't necessarily like a traditional like UFO researcher or anything like that. But, um, you know, I don't know if this was a formal agreement between them or just a, a, sh a, a handshake. But, um, you know, the, the fact that this person is fulfilling that that uh agreement to me is just the the quintessence of of of, of doing doing the right thing uh and and because so many families have no interest in in this material and so much of the stuff ends up in right. landfills or parcel that sold piecemeal on on ebay um so you know i I think it's important for people to, to plan and, 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 uh, and look at, there are a number of really great uh, organizations I've been meaning to ask. So is, I, and I, uh, is expanding frontiers research a separate nonprofit than, uh, the, uh, the archive, the, the, the Utah archives. No, uh, it's all the same. It's it all the same okay. umbrella. Yep. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Um, well, fantastic. Um, and, uh, hopefully someday I'll get to go, uh, uh, have a chance to go through some of those. Materials. I know it would be so much fun. Yeah. Especially for you with your knowledge base to see this. It's, it's a real, you know, blessing. And I've been lucky that for me, because I have such a, a big commercial space that I can store the, the documents, uh, the files, the books, everything in, in a climate controlled, obviously a, a protected space where they're not exposed to light, you know, and, and, things that could potentially um, damage them. So it's, it's, it's great. I'm glad that I have that opportunity. And again, it's like, it's something that, you know, for us now that we've got the nonprofit, those are, those are costs that we need to figure out how to cover. You know, we just started last year and we're off to a great start. And I look forward to actually getting to the point where we can fundraise and people will donate to, <clears throat> to what we're doing. And I know, you know, more than anybody that that can be, kind of a tedious, uh, process. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, it's really, uh, you know, when I met Jack, uh, Brewer in, in 2017 in Roswell, um, I really enjoyed hanging out with him and talking and, and, um, you know, that I, I, I think it's pretty exciting what y'all are doing. So, um, I'm, gl I'm glad to, to know that this is under one roof and, and thank you, UFO John Doe, for the super sticker. I appreciate that. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it's it's really cool. I feel very energized about the project. And then to have Barry Greenwood, you know, um, with oh, us. Oh, right, well, right. You know, that it's, it's a great thing. Barry's such a, I mean, he's just a treasure trove of knowledge up here, you know. And I can't even imagine visiting him to see mm -hmm. what he's got <laughs> in his possessions. So I just think it's. I don't know. I think it's really cool. I love it. I, it's exciting. I think it's important. Um, it's an important part of, of our history, you know, whether we like it or not, it's, it's. Yeah. And, you know, I, I look, think just thinking back to some of your uh, recent interviews um, uh, with like James Carrion and um, uh, Mark Pilkington and, and, you know, for those who, who are familiar or, uh, or for those who aren't, um, you know, my, my, again, my interest in this is, is twofold in the sense that I believe that there is a true UFO phenomena that could, it could represent some kind of alien other. And then I think that there's the false U, UFO phenomena, the UAF, UFAUX, the faux, uh, UFO phenomena that is, uh, uh, largely human generated and it is part of this deception, uh, uh, operation that's been ongoing for decades, um, and, and perhaps as long as uh, humans have used uh, religious and spiritual beliefs to manipulate other humans. Right. And uh, through techniques, technologies, and, um, and just uh, uh, storytelling really. Um, and, you know, I was th thinking of James Car Carrion's 
uh, suggestion, and he's not the only person or the originator of this idea, but that the that the intelligent the American uh, military industrial complex intelligence complex uh, created the modern UFO myth, and that we've been um, uh, living living the effects of that ever since. And I think that there's absolutely some some truth to that. Um, but again, at the same time, I think that there is a true UFO phenomenon. Um, uh, whatever its uh, ultimate origin and source may be. But um, I think there's just, there, there's an obligation on the part of those of us who traffic in this kind of uh, information, uh, you know, ha as preservationists, um, I mean, there's plenty of that. Any librarian will tell you, we got stuff in this archive that we don't like, you know, <laughs> and we feel very awkward about preserving uh, you know, that, that, that does not meet uh, our modern 2023 standards for uh, being copacetic. Right. Uh, but, copacetic. I love that word. Yeah. And, um, it, it, but at, at, and I, at the same time, it's to me, I, again, this is where I get really frustrated with so much of the current, current, you know, uh, banning and burning practical mentality of, uh, uh, that seems to be uh, proliferating, but um it, it's important to talk about these two different aspects again, because we do want to prevent people from becoming victims uh, of their own, uh, of, of, the, of others shenanigans uh, uh, and machinations, as well as just the, the human the foibles of the human mind. Um, I think, you know, it is, it is far too easy for all of us to succumb to our own biases and, and um, uh, how you say confirmation bias. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I have to check myself all the time, and and I see so often no too many people not checking themselves ever. <laughs> and uh, uh, there's a there's a uh, a sticker I see around that I love, uh, and I repost sometimes. It says, "Think you might be wrong." <laughs> you know, I love it. Um, uh, I'm not, of course, but you know, uh, <laughs> of course not. But, but uh, yeah, I think. It, it behooves uh, us in this this field, especially those preserving this material, to to provide some sort of uh, uh, analysis and warning labels and um, trigger warnings, <laughs> such as they might be. Um, there's just been far too many uh, instances of, I mean, there's there's the obvious uh, grand horrors of, of things like heaven's gate uh and then there's uh you know just the, the scams uh that are too many to mention um and and i just i just want uh you know some some really good research to happen um and and whether that's in the soft sciences or hard sciences I, there's there's still so much room for exploration um you know, I know uh, we've talked about our mutual interest in things like the Hesdalen uh, light phenomena, mm -hmm. the, the various forms and ideas about uh, BOL ball of light phenomena, whether they be categorized as earth lights or, or some other kind of plasma. And here, too, we get into the I mean, there's the whole um, uh, military tech creating, oh. you know, plasma holograms and, and whatnot. I mean. We are living in a very strange time where, uh, you know, a, a stuff that has been written about as fiction is is apparently reality. And the ability for the powers that be uh, with unlimited uh, black budgets uh, is, is hard to fathom what they aren't capable of in the form of uh, uh, faking, creating those false faux UFOs. And um and and how do we how do we tell uh, the real from the fake anymore? Right. Especially in the in the era of deep fake everything, um, uh, it's become it's come becoming uh, increasingly challenging. And uh, so much of um, I've been I've been being interviewed recently by uh, a young woman who's doing I don't know if it's a dissertation, but it's uh, a, a research project. Um, on uh, conspiracy theory and the internet. And, um, you know, we end up talking a lot about uh, uh, UFOs, even though the focus is more on like QAnon type stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I, I keep jokingly saying, well, well we got to blame the Gnostics, you know, <laughs> and, 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 you know, the, who, who really uh, warned us about the, the uh, uh, illusion, the elusive nature, the illusionary nature of, of, uh, of mana and reality, um, which of course is, is more or less what uh, um, uh, many a religion has, has put forth anyway, that, that, you know, all this is just, you know, this is just the, the, the devil's work, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not real, but at the same time, uh, it's all we got. And, and, um, it's, 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 as it's, it's very, very important <laughs> to, to not lose sight of that, especially if it leads to, uh, um, uh, suicide or murder and mayhem. Um, let's, you know, there, there's there's too much uh people there's too many cases of people uh succumbing to false narratives false right. realities uh from so, oftentimes now i think weaponized folklore and uh weaponized like storytelling um uh, weaponized folklore that's great uh inspired by mark bilkington i think there great. was um I, I think it was he, a lecture he gave where he described ufos as weapons of mass enchantment Yes. Um, yes. That is uh, and, such a great lecture. And um, I kind of repackaged that as uh, um, something similar. I can't remember. It's in the the re UFOs reframing the debate uh, essay that I wrote, but um, which was all about this this dichotomy that I'm trying to describe of 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 yes, there's something real going on here. It's really important. I also, I mean, I've said it before. I th I think. I think that whatever the UFO phenomena is, it is the, been the source of the creation of all uh, religions on this planet. And that offends a lot of people. And I don't mean to offend them or, or deride uh, their, their religious or spiritual beliefs, but the kinds of phenomena that make up uh, paranormal and UFO phenomena are the exact things that create uh, that people experience that then cause them to write a sacred book and, and launch a new uh, religion It may start as a cult, but then, you know, we've got, you know, uh, huge cults ruling the world. And some of them are called science. Oh, interesting comment. <laughs> so I've got to, I want to go back uh, and Peter, I will ask your questions. Peter from Shadowy Spectrums. You've got to go check out his, his channel and watch his, his great interviews just to throw that in there. But I want to go back to Heaven's Gate because you have mentioned, you know, that they came through Austin. And so tell us a little oh, yeah. bit about that experience what happened um if, if i remember correctly um my friend uh who was a, an anthropology student at ut saw a flyer at a uh, south austin grocery store that caught her attention and she brought it to my attention uh and um I think I have that in the archives, the, the actual flyer that she, wow. I think she took it down. Um, and uh, there was a, a free lecture happening at a, a downtown uh, a hotel right on the river, completely free event. And uh, I don't think we recognized immediately what we, by the end of the lecture, we're pretty sure we knew who these people were. Um, as, as a fan of Valet, I was very familiar with his 1979 book, Messengers of Deception, where he uh, talked about uh, his research into what he described as the Bowen Peep uh, cult, uh, and Bowen Peep being the, the, one of the many names for Marshall Applewhite and uh, his uh, wife. And, um, you know, Valet had all the way back in 79 been war warning the world about the potential abuse of of people's belief systems, uh, especially in the in the realm of UFO contact uh, type cults. And so we went to this lecture and um, Marshall Applewhite and his uh, w wife were not there. There were uh, a number of, of, of representatives on the stage. They were all dressed uh, in plain, un, un -flash, non flashy clothing, uh, probably like tunic type things. Um, and they proceeded to espouse what to me, and I again, no, no offense to any particular religion, but I remember thinking this sound like Baptist to me, like, you know, um, the, except not with the fire and brimstone. It was just, you know, this, this world is not the important thing. Uh, the, the next world, this higher vibrational world is more important. 
Um, and you know, we're trying to ascend into that war other world. And so it just sounded like every other new age, mm. uh, 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 group meditation group that I'd ever encountered. There was, there was a little something off, but I, I wouldn't say that I felt like there was anything sinister or I certainly didn't would never have guessed that they were going to end up the way they did. And, um, but and but I, and interestingly enough, um, uh, the audience was not having it. Uh, <laughs> the Austin audience was uh, just not really on board. They were asking some pretty harsh questions. Um, I think most people there were like, there, "There's something weird here." Um, uh, but again, I don't think anybody really felt that there was anything sinister. It just sounded too too. To woo, and I don't like using that uh, word. Uh, a forum I used to frequent, there was somebody who defined woo as wonder occluding, uh, wonder occluding uh, optimism. No, I can't remember what the, the second O was. But anyway, um, we, so at the end of it, I'm like, I, I talked to my friend. I'm like, so did, I think this is, I think this is the bow and peep cult. And then come to find out, uh, they were then calling themselves, I think doe and D or toe and T and, um, and yeah, within a year, uh, we saw the news like everybody else about, uh, them having committed suicide in, was it Rancho Santa Fe, uh, the home there. And I mean, it's it, as horrible and sad as it is. Uh, it's, it's a fascinating case. Um, and just to have come that close, uh, to the group. And I, I don't know whether anybody from Austin, whether they were successful in their recruitment drive, cause this was their, mm -hmm. uh, they were making the, this tour, uh, trying to get more disciples, uh, um, on board before the boarding party commenced. And, um, you know, this, this has been uh, something again, that's been a warning for a long time, um, uh, and I, I, I don't think it can be under, I don't think it can be stressed strongly enough that you really need to, to be aware of, of, of stuff like that. Uh, and I think now more than ever, um, I mean, it, it's clear that there is a mass fascination with, I mean, the rise of true crime, which has obviously always been popular, but, uh, you know, the rise of true crime podcasts and, and especially this, this, uh, uh, obsession and fascination with uh, um, uh, cults, all the documentaries and such. I mean, it, it, it is fascinating. I'm, I mean, I don't think it's as simple as just, you know, hey, everybody likes to look at a train wreck, but um, uh, maybe bad uh, analogy given the recent times. But um, it's it, it just seems like it's so easy. And when, when, when people who seemingly are so intelligent uh, get caught up in it, but then you know, we've we've just lived through one of the more uh, tumultuous political climates in in ages, and and it ain't over yet. And um, and there seems to be like what some people are describing as mass psychosis happening. Uh, and the thing is, both sides are making accusations against the other, uh, uh, whether you know, uh, usually along political lines, and um, and that's obviously not very conducive to uh, a real uh, meaningful conversation or, or progress. Right. Um, there's, there's other aspects of the uh, heaven's gate thing that I think merit more investigation. I don't know if these, if this has ever been disproven, but there were allegations that um, um, I believe that, that the, the, the house that they were renting may have been owned by a shady figure from conspiracy circles, but I'm not going to repeat the name uh, for fear of slander. Uh, but um, and again, like I say, I don't know that there's any, any uh, evidence of that, but um, I, I'm somebody who ha has long suspected that MK ultra continued well after um, they got the slap on the wrist and that uh, the, the kinds of, of, of techniques uh, and experiments that went on then have continued and that the, the, the UFO field is, is like the primary stomping ground uh, uh, for, for those kinds of, of operations. And uh, again, um, Valet has, has suggested the same thing. 
um, about uh, uh, cults like the Order of the Solar Temple that uh, did mass suicides in France and uh, Canada simultaneously, um, where there seems to have been the faking uh, of, of um, uh, you know, occult contact experiences um, and, and other shenanigans going on. Uh, and then the, 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 the famous, uh, um, was it Pontoy's? Uh, France case where he's he's intimated that there that that was perhaps the end game of uh, a, a staged alien abduction that happened there um, uh, with uh, it Frank Fontaine I think was the 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 main person but um, there's a lot of these cases and and you know again I said this is all speculation I don't you know the, the, each of these are rabbit holes that can be gone down. Um, uh, in, 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 in the shadier, darker, uh, side of, of this phenomena. But, um, given what we know we can prove as far as, um, shady, shady shenanigans in, in the UFO field, uh, it, it doesn't seem that, uh, unlikely to me that, that they could be that dark. You know, and I, and I think, you know, sometimes, you know, I'm going to, I, sometimes I'll wake up with one thought and then I'll go to bed with another thought because it's just there's so many uh so many things to think about in this this subject but I do I mean I would feel that this would be a perfect place to to go in and and you know experiment or learn you know you've got people who are susceptible to things and it's I don't know I think that we need to be very careful in the world of of UFOs and going to conferences and being exposed to people who are telling you specific things that don't really understand what they're talking about and don't have training and, and, you know, I mean, in areas that where they should be trained and, and I, it, it's, it's fascinating to me. And I know with my Skinwalker Ranch stuff, I went down, I mean, I went down a couple of different rabbit holes and then, okay, is this just another kind of MK ultra type thing? Are they taking people out there in the military and experimenting on them? And I mean, who knows at the end of the day, that's such a corrupt uh, thing. Nobody's ever going to hear the truth. And, you know, my, my sense now is that it, it was, it was just, it's all been a kind of a big grift in that regard. But I mean, there are a lot of, a lot of things to ask when you're getting into this, this subject. And I think cults, Cults are very prevalent in the UFO world, whether it's the cult of Elizondo, the cult of, you know, A, B, C, and D. It's, it's the cult of um, Jack Sarfati or the cult of, you know, when uh, all these people have uh, fans and people that will hang on every word and believe in anything a person says. And that's, it's not exclusive obviously to the ufo world this happens at yoga pilates it happens in in any any area that you're in and so it just is but for some reason because there it's like the wild west in the ufo world there are not a lot of guardrails where there would be in other areas yeah um and the mentioning of of yoga uh just again reminds me of of the rise of QAnon. um you know, there's there's been so many uh, different arenas that 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 belief system has taken hold that you would not have necessarily imagined would be uh, fertile ground for that. And um, you know, I've both f close friends, family, and and others in the in the research field have commented that like you know you, you there was this point where all these other avenues of our life were suddenly like, oh, you know, my favorite, you know, uh, yoga uh, uh, teacher suddenly was starting to seed their feed with, you know, QAnon stuff. Right. And um, it's, 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 it, it can be really insidious. Um, and it's, it's, there, there need to be some guardrails. Uh, 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 yeah, it, it goes back to there, there needs to be better, uh, policing and support structures and um and just more effort put into uh protecting people and it, it, to me it, again it's it's as simple as you know if somebody is telling you that they know the truth and they're the the and the, you know and they're not you know specifying when they're speculating versus you know everything i say is absolute truth because right. i know it 
um, then they probably are full of BS and uh, and and should be avoided uh, or you know at least take take everything you hear from them taken with a, a boulder sized a giant rock sized piece of salt. Um, and but that doesn't always, <laughs> that doesn't always protect anything either. I'm just I'm suddenly flashing back to old Austin's own Alex Jones saying, "Don't believe me. Do your own research." Oh, good, good. That was a good one. <laughs> Great, nice. You should be an impersonator. <laughs> yeah, and, and what what do you make of you know? I mean the the coast to coast, the love of Alex Jones, the love of some of the, some of these people that have created really dangerous uh, paths for people to go down. Well, it, and it's really, uh, you know, uh, I remember when coast to coast never would never have any, wouldn't, wouldn't have Alex on, would not have any conspiracy stuff on. There was a distinct change there. Um, and I think I still remember, I think it was 2006 when they had a 9-11 round table on and they had a, a really good uh, uh, a skeptic on and they had Alex on. And it actually was a pretty uh, interesting show. Of course, uh, my friends like myself who were 9-11 uh, skeptics, uh, nay, 9-11 truthers, um, uh, pinpoint 2006 is, is when 9-11 uh, truth really went off the rails. And, and thank you, Alex Jones. Um uh, I, I mean, fear sells. That's really, I think, what it, it comes down to. And and um, and and th it's just like why Bill Cooper became so uh, so popular. Uh, you know, it's just selling supplements and selling things to protect you, fr you know, from from the coming uh, civil war or the coming, you know, apocalypse. I mean, it, it's it, I think it all really comes down to prepping being such a lucrative market. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, uh, there was a cartoon I reproduced recently. That's, uh, a rich guy, you know, with a big plate of, of cookies and there's a guy to the right and a guy to the left. And he's, he's pointing to one direction and saying, you gotta look, be careful of this guy. This, this foreigner wants all your cookies. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just, uh, uh, I think rich people making more money off of uh, the fears of the working class right. uh, and, and divide and conquer and, and make a lot of money along the way. Um, uh, if, if folks haven't seen, there's a really good uh, uh, BBC podcast on QAnon. I think it's called Q, the, the coming storm or something like that is really, uh, really, really good uh, uh, long form exploration of uh, the origins of of QAnon and it it goes into a lot of different areas of conspiracy culture um, that for me I find fascinating. Um, you know, it's been part and parcel to the exploration of of UFOs. I mean, um, you know, obviously with uh, the rise of of uh, the X Files in the '90s and the popularity of conspiracy theories as told through the lens of uh, you know the paranormal and uh, the ufological. Um, and I mean, it's just been right from the start, this idea of, you know, the government's covering it up, um, whatever, what, what is it is they're covering up or not sure, but it's either, you know, aliens or crash saucers or, um, this, that, and the other. And, and why, why wouldn't we believe any of that when we have so many verified, uh, conspiracies that they've, uh, committed over the years and atrocities. And, um, uh, that's why I still lean lean towards the, 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 one of the darkest interpretations of the Roswell crash as uh, uh, documented in Nick Redfern's uh, uh, body snatchers in the desert. And then his follow-up book, the, the Roswell, I think it's the, or the, the Roswell UFO conspiracy or just the UFO conspiracy. I forget, but I'm trying to remember I've got and, it sitting, you know, over there on the shelf and which was, recapitulated in a different form in at the, as the end chapter in Annie Jacobson's mm -hmm. mammoth area 51 that she got so much grief over because it's like, uh, I mean, I, hardcore area 51 people, I think were critical. They're like, she got this fact wrong. She got that fact wrong. It's like, well, it's a giant book. So I'm sure there's going to be some, Oh my Lord. Errors. Have and they read then, Richard Dolan? I mean, if they read, <laughs> Right. I'm thinking some of these people ought to try reading some of the other books and critiquing. Yeah. yeah. I don't and, know. 
uh, but that, but she had the similar, uh, a, a, a different, a similar, but different, uh, uh idea, uh, in, in, or, or story that she was told in that book. And again, people criticize her, p- people criticize Nick Redfern for reporting what they've uncovered, not the, that they necessarily believe it though. Uh, Nick in a recent, um, uh, mysterious universe article more or less was saying, what do I think about Roswell? Well, you're probably not going to like it. <laughs> Because I think he's slowly leaned in that direction. Uh, so I mean, so this is the the idea that these were children, or the the the, the, the idea that uh, at the end of the war, um, uh, the 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 United States, just like we know they did with Project Paperclip, bringing over Nazi scientists, seeding them throughout the university and uh, and military industrial complex, uh, and also uh, as part of the uh, the Horton brothers uh, flying wing uh, aviation technology experiments, um, but also you, less known, but equally documented or, or almost as well documented, but there is documentation for uh, the Japanese unit 731, which was basically their equivalent of Mingala, this, this uh, horrible human experimentation, uh, uh, chemical warfare, biological warfare, um, uh, and, and other types of human experimentation that was going on and uh, the, the melding of it allegedly, uh, in New Mexico, um, uh, in this, this period of time and the testing of high altitude balloons, oh, we're back to balloons, um, uh, with these, uh, these unwitting victim experimentees, um, often, uh, 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 children or, or, or in, in the case of, uh, unit 731, um, uh, uh, prisoners of war, uh, being, being, uh, used. And I think it, I think it's in, in, uh, Redfern's book that, that there were some accusations that we didn't just bring over the scientists, but we brought some of their test subjects. And then once those initial subjects ran out, that they got more from nearby, uh, 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 institutions with people that wouldn't be missed. Um, people who, people, adults and children that, that had, uh, uh, disabilities. Um, and that the idea being that, that, that what people perceived as, uh, inhuman or alien looking humanoids were in fact, uh, say some perhaps uh, somebody with a disability like progeria that, that has similarities to the, uh, common depiction of the grays. Now, can you imagine if this is ever proven, what's that going to do for Roswell's tourism, let alone, you know, uh, people's trust of the, the government? Um, you know, the whole thing with Tom DeLong and his uh, uh, ATIP, OSAP, To the Stars Academy uh, PSYOP campaign was stated in the leaked WikiLeak uh, uh, email uh, with Podesta, where he said, you know, this this campaign is all about revitalizing, revamping uh, uh, the 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 negative image that youth have of, uh, and I don't think it's just youth. I think uh, the, the the negative image that people have of the government and what it's done in the name of national security. Hmm. And lo and behold, you know, we actually may be. I mean, he may have succeeded. Like. We, we may be on the verge uh, uh, of, you know, this if this if this report that's supposed to come out next year has any real teeth and actually does uh, its job. And I like I really appreciated uh, uh, James Carrion's uh, likening it to wouldn't it be if it has as much uh, teeth as uh, the um, the church committee hearings on the MK Ultra stuff and the other abuses of this, the intelligence community, um, it may actually mean something. I don't have, I'm not holding my breath and I just do not have that much faith in our, in our uh, systems of government or legal system. But um, as he kind of said, as James Carrion said, you know, it's, it's really like, it really seems that DeLong's (laughs) proposal is happening and that they could very well get, you know, uh, a protection for whistleblowers and they could uh, potentially get control of the narrative while apologizing like, oh yeah, here's what we found. Uh, yeah, we did all these horrible things, but you know, it was to protect you. Uh, we had to, we had to become as bad as the enemy we were protecting you against. Um, maybe I'll be wrong. I hope so. 
<laughs> I hope so too. But you know that it's definitely it, there's a lot, lot of, a lot of things to question in there, and it's it's pretty heavy and disturbing stuff. And so I've got to ask you about like my the my lab thing. Um, I have talked to a few people that have gone down that road, and it's, in my opinion, have clearly lost touch with reality. Um, just you know, is, is it easy? It, I mean, because we've seen in the UFO world, you can you can do that, and then you're believing this whole narrative that you're you've been, you know, abducted by the military because you are being um, you're part of a genetic experience experiment with aliens. I mean, what are what are your thoughts on some of the my lab stuff? And we've you know we know that we've done testing on on fellow Americans, but yeah. Um... It, it it is it is it's absolutely one of the areas that fascinated me. I mean the the zine the zine that I did in the nineties um, called Elf Infested Spaces E L F Infested Spaces. Uh, it was called I, I changed it to E L F um, uh, Elf Infested Spaces, being the Terrence McKenna quote to describe the 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 DMT psychedelic realm that he thought uh, facilitated contact with uh, some kind of alien other. But the ELF being a recurring theme uh, of mind control and or parapsychological significance uh, or both. Um, and there is just this uh, rampant lore um, that just has only increased um, and then, you know, became a part of the, the UFO lore uh, and, and has continued to, to, to proliferate and mutate. Uh, and get even wilder and crazier than I ever would have imagined possible with the, uh, uh, the, the bases on Mars and time traveling and all that. Um, yeah, I, I, when, when I led uh, the local support group for uh, UFO experiencers, um, you know, it, it seemed like every experiencer, every abductee had some some element in their story or experience that absolutely seemed like the, 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 the gate, the potential gateway to that. And of course, you know, I was already, they and me, uh, we were all reading about these, these, uh, accounts in the, the, uh, the published literature. Um, so it wasn't hard to like, look for that and find it over and over and over again. But and, you know, even then we were lamenting, it's like, well, you know, gosh, you know, this abductee, they, they came from a military family or they lived near a military base. We all live near military bases. There are so many military bases, um, but there definitely seemed to me like the potential for a real fire where there was smoke. Um, and so it, it's something that I've certainly always entertained, but like everything else, you got to really tread lightly, especially when dealing with people who are having the experiences. Cause you don't want to, you don't want to scare them. You don't want to uh, lead them. You don't want to um, uh, uh, drive them into a belief system. That's not going to do them any good. I mean, you could, you can try to, you can believe that they're telling you, and I advocate this for all these anomalous experiences or, per, or perceived experiences, whatever, the, all these stories, you know, you can believe them without believing what they're telling you. You can believe that they believe it and that for all intents and purposes, that is their felt real world experience. But it, it is incumbent upon us to try and, at the very least offer alternative explanations that, mm -hmm. that and, and help if, if it seems warranted to help them get help. Right. Um, um, and obviously, you know, that's a very, a, a very tough uh, line to tread because you obviously, you don't want to make them feel any more ostracized than they probably already do. But I, I, I do think that there's the possibility of, of, of real military mind control uh, uh, aspects to the, to the, the my lab stuff. Um, and it may be the case, like with the other reports by uh, Redfern in his uh, book on the Collins elite, we know that there have been these quasi uh, religious 
governmental organizations or the, the groups of people in the government who've I think I think the way he describes it is they they weren't like an official organelle of the government, but they were government employees who had formed their own group, kind of like the UFO working group that we've heard about with uh, uh, Alexander and others. And it it and there does seem to be instances where this these groups have have engaged with abductees and UFO witnesses. And so, you know, maybe this is the source of some men in black uh, 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 reports. Maybe this is the, the, you know, the case that some of these people have actually literally been abducting uh, <laughs> humans, abducting abductees to try to f find out what the, what's going on. Um, but as with all these things, you know, I, there's a real lack of hard verifiable evidence and um it, it just becomes such a morass of, of, you know, it's just somebody's story. Um, I, I, you know, the uh, very famous Bud Hopkins case, uh, Linda Cortil Napolitano mm -hmm. um, uh, is, is a wild, wild story. And I remember hearing about this for the first time uh when we d held a little mini conference here in Austin for Austin MUFON. And it was like, we had, we had uh, a, the a, a couple whose last name was coin who were abductees talking about their abduction experience and UFO sightings and harassment. Um, and then we also had uh, some, some crop circle um, uh, presentations, but Walt Andrus at this, this conference, this little mini conference here in Austin, he starts leaking the story about Linda Cortile. And, you know, for those who don't know the story, it's, it's this, it's like, it sounds like the best UFO abduction case you could ever hope for with multiple witnesses and broad day, not well, I mean, not broad daylight, but in, in public with multiple witnesses on a bridge and people seeing, you know, the, the, the abductee floated out of a window and into a craft and just, and, and, and there's somebody from the United Nations involved and their bodyguards. And it's just, Ooh, yes. It's a great spy <laughs> thriller. Right. Um, yeah, I think there's a book called night eyes that people were claiming uh, was the inspiration for the story. But um, anyway, all that is to say that, you know, there, there, there was likely something really going on there, uh, but who the hell knows what, what really was going on. But um, with, with the military abduction stuff, um, it really, over time seemed to morph into this whole super soldier uh, narrative and the, this whole off world uh, uh, narrative and which reeks of uh, the old uh, alternative three uh, uh, British uh, documentary hoax. Um, all of which it's like, maybe it's true. I it just, but it just seems so ridiculously outlandish and how, how could you ever uh, uh, cover up anything as huge as that? Um, but uh, yeah, you know, when you look at, <clears throat> you look at like stories by uh, famous abductees like Whitley Strieber and, and, and his, at some point, even he going into descriptions of uh, his, his feeling and sense that he was part of some kind of, that the secret school may not have just been with the aliens, but it may, that may have actually been cover for uh, some kind of mind control stuff. And the fact that we know that some of the MK ultra sub sub programs involved school children in uh, San Antonio, Texas, in El Paso, Texas. And this is, this was reported in the sixties on mainstream news when it came out because of the church uh, committee hearings and such. And um, so, you know, we know that MK ultra projects, some of the ones that are the hardest to verify, but that there is some documentation of involved children. Of course, th in those cases, it was all like, oh, observing them and trying to learn about social interaction of kids and, and trying to detect, you know, leadership skills at a young age and stuff like that. It's like, oh, that's the good part that you're telling us about, I'm sure. Um, and and the fact that, you know, um, uh, I think the guy's name was Struggled, Str Strughold or something like that, um, was one of these Nazis that was uh, brought over on paper clip from paperclip and was uh, seated uh, in San Antonio and was the, like the father of, of, uh, of uh, astroscience as it relates to the, the health of, of humans in space. 
you know, one really starts to wonder, well, maybe, maybe there's something to that. Uh, you know, maybe there really was something going on there with, with, uh, kids and maybe Whitley was one of those. Um, there's, there's a lot of crazy stories about Whitley Strieber's, uh, youth, um, that have yet to be generated told. from him, right? <laughs> What's that generated from him by him? <laughs> well, um, the stories I'm thinking of that I am not going to tell, uh, involve, uh, uh, somebody close to him hearing from multiple people other than uh, hearing the same story from people that didn't know each other that were telling stories about Whitley. Um, anyway, um, there's a lot of weird synchronicities with his childhood, uh, that, that seem verifiable. Um, but it, it, to me is quite disturbing how that, that what started to me as, you know, I mean, again, uh, the, the titillating, you know, uh, uh, aspect of, 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 Oh, you know, is, is there some kind of continuation of MK ultra and the, the narrative just exploding into really just like just real wacky stuff. And then move on, like having, uh, at their symposium, you know, people, uh, who are espousing this. Why? Because, right. Oh, they're popular. They'll attract people to the symposium. We can make some money. Uh, that, that's, that's really low on the list of my criticisms of move on, but it's still yeah, pretty well, that was pretty a, important. That was one of the pivotal moments of, for of, a lot of people you know, yeah. for move on. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, beyond that, I, you know, the, I don't even think, know that that phrase, my lab is even really used that much anymore. I think it really got supplanted by the super soldier, uh, phrasing, uh, but I, I may I be conflating, about, you know, Melinda Leslie and, and that crowd. Mm -hmm. But then wasn't that also, um, oh my gosh, who was the fellow from Germany? Well, is that who published the, the original book? Um, Helmut Lamar, Lam yeah, Lamar, Helmut Lamar. 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 Um, yep. and uh, his wife, I think, did the the weird alien love book, um, about like the the aliens engineering relationships or something like that. Love, oh, alien bites. Is, is that it? Yeah, maybe I it's been. That was like so long ago. Wow, I didn't realize that he was. I'm. I'm. I. I. I could be completely conflating. Okay. Because it seems like I've got a. I, I know that I've got in the the Druffle files. I think I have some correspondence with Helmut, uh, talking about his. You know, writing that. Uh, writing that piece and then being. I mean, basically he was, I think I, I got the impression that he was threatened or bullied or things had happened and he just decided to, to just walk away. So did I, I you know, it was, it was Martin Cannon's uh, controllers hypothesis that really cemented my uh, interest in this. Uh, di didn't you interview him? Yeah. He's been on several times. Okay. Yes. I, a couple of times. Right. Right. Um, yeah. And I, Hmm, that, that guy's an interesting character. Uh, but that, that article, I mean, was, I, I thought really did a great job. And I, I think he's disavowed it maybe, or did it at one time. Um, but, uh, I thought it went a long way towards, uh, explicating this, this idea and, and why it seemed like to fit, uh, so much of the data. Um, but that, again, that's just, you know, I, I haven't really, my interest in parapsychology, you know, and I know for a lot of people that's like, Oh, you're explaining an unknown with an unknown. Um, but there's so much in, in, uh, UFO close encounter cases from, uh, the, the alleged telep telepathy involved between the uh, entities and, and the witnesses, um, to yeah, levitation and, and all these things. Yes. They may have technological explanations, um, uh, but his, his re looking at that, uh, at, at so much of the, uh, 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 UFO, uh, close encounter literature in light of what we know from the mind control research, I thought is, is incredibly telling. And that, that is what leads, led me to, uh, take the military abduction stuff, 
uh, as 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 probable or or uh, as possible and and probably probable. Um, <laughs> No, it's fascinating. And I mean, I, you know, I, I remember reading that as well. And I think Martin laid out some very important points with facts of what we were doing. And, you know, I mean, implanting uh, animals with, uh, you know, chips and, and, you know, I mean, so I really, I appreciated the controllers. And I know that he was very much about, you know, when, when he started to kind of receive blowback from that, one of the biggest things that I remember him telling me was the fact that he was, you know, there were people that were approaching him that just like in the UFO world, like have this uh, belief system that perhaps mundane things are things that are extraordinary and they weren't. And so there was this big push and there were, there was also a, a push by specific people in that had political agendas to also kind of promote that type of thing. And so it was just this whole uh, mixture of things coming at him and he didn't really want to have that responsibility for, for, for that. He, he knew that it was going down kind of a dangerous rabbit hole. Yeah. And I, again, it's a uh, big warning label speculation. Um, you know, even if you're, uh, you know, giving your citations for your sources and everything, it's still important to say, you know, we don't know that any of this is absolutely true. Um, I mean, other than the facts that you are able to show as, as true and factual. Um, but it, it gets into that whole danger zone of, again, like the, the fact that I, 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 I think I said this in our, in our previous interview about uh, mass shootings and this, this possibility that the copycat effect could be engineered um, uh, or that, you know, that, that certain terrible, uh, 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 violent acts by individuals could be the result of, of a mind control experiment. I mean, there are absolutely many cases of people who, uh, uh, have, have believed themselves to be being harassed. Um, uh, I mean, I, I, you, I remember there was the Naval shipyard shooter, who uh, the the gun? Uh, I can't remember if it was an AK-47, but he had he had scratched into the gun my ELF weapon, and you know I remember some of the news people they they were like my elf weapon. They just they didn't have a clue what that was a reference to. And again, it was a reference to ELF, extremely low frequency, uh, as a supposed carrier way for mind control uh, uh, technology. And and this the, and and this person was basically what they call. Uh, you know, a, uh, a targeted individual. And that's the other thing there's there, the, the TI movement the, is. And so, yeah, it, 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 it can become very frightening when you encounter somebody who thinks that they're a targeted individual uh, or that you, the, who thinks that they're, you know, being surveilled or harassed or what have you. And, you know, it, it's really hard sometimes to, to discern whether, you know, this is just uh, an organic, um, a psychological issue um, uh, that 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 may or may not be treatable uh, in, in medically or pharmacologically, um, and it, it's certainly the case that we know you know people can have those same problems triggered by actual abuse uh, and right. actual harassment. Right. So, I mean, we you have to be really careful, and this is this is why. Uh, there, there, there really needs to be some hardcore uh, ethical uh, training and um, uh, uh, guardrails, again, to use the, your phrase, uh, in, in place to, to help people who are in, engaging with folks who, if you, you know, if you're getting into this field, you may encounter some of this stuff and it can be overwhelming. Uh, and, you know, you're, you're, you know, knee jerk response might be, you know, well, I, oh yeah, I've heard about all that. And, and just, it feeds into the, this person's uh, 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 belief and, and it makes the situation worse. Right. Or you just like, are like walking away and or backing away. And, and that can be, you know, traumatizing for them as well to, to feel rejected by the person who's there to, allegedly to help them. Um, this field, man, <laughs> uh, it, it's a minefield. Um, it is. And um, I think that that's, you know, I mean, those are, these are really great and important points that you're making. And these are um, things that I have learned and witnessed. And that's why I'm so, you know, I, I feel such a need to to 
inform people about Skinwalker Ranch, about some of these these things that have gone on that have really had a detrimental effect. And, you know, I, I just think we deserve better than that. And we have to protect people that are potentially vulnerable. And, and I want to ask you, like with your abduction groups, I mean, um, what did you, from the time you started doing that, what did you learn with the way you interacted with people from the beginning, you know, towards the end? Well, I think in hindsight, one of the things I learned is, is more about my own confirmation bias and my own, um, wishful thinking. Um, you know, I, I didn't found the, the local group. I, 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 the, the local group was founded by uh, a woman named Jean Staffen who passed away, um, uh, last year, I think. Um, and, uh, she, she formed it at the height of the abduction, uh, panic, uh, at the height of the abduction phenomena in the, uh, 1990s. And it, it, it was, it got a lot of attention and, uh, a lot of attendees. And as these things go, they slowly, you know, people stopped coming and, and, but it would settle down to a, a core group. Um, but at its at its height for us there we we were having like two at least two meetings of it a month uh and these were typically uh, public meetings at uh local public library spaces um and you know the this before we really you were using the phrase the, these were our attempts at creating a safe space uh where where folks could could feel comfortable and safe uh talking about stuff that was likely very uncomfortable or potentially so. Um, and what we quickly learned and saw was that there, as much as, you know, the UFO community has for decades put forth this idea that there's a one size fits all, uh, template of the abduction phenomena. Um, what I think Streber and, and others who have been, open to high strangeness have uh, repeatedly shown is that there's a much wider sc uh, spectrum of, of experience with these types of phenomena. And, but we also had, we also had uh, people who had near death experiences and, and a, a wide variety of anomalous personal experiences and sightings and so forth. And, um, and and it the, the, and the and this was reflected in the changing of the name over time from you know Austin Abductee Support Group to UFO Experiencer and Study Group, uh, so, or support UFO Experiencer Support and Study Group or something like that. Um, it got much longer. The name got much longer. Uh, but at some point, uh, uh, our founder, uh, and and I'm and I'm not an experiencer though. I think I've been accidentally represented as one a couple of times. Um, not by my, but by, uh, people who were misinformed, but, um, um, uh, I, uh, but it wasn't exclusively, you didn't have to be an experiencer to, to be in these meetings, uh, because they were in public spaces. We could not exclude anybody unless they were actually disruptive. And boy, we've had, we had our share of those too. Um, and, but to get back to what I started to say about learning about my own confirmation bias and, and wishful thinking. I, you know, all, all of that experience led me to the uh, paper I wrote uh, back in like 95 that um, I still pretty much uh, am in, in agreement with, but I recognize now that what, what I came away with as my conclusion was more what I wanted to believe. And that is that, that when people are faced with an unknown uh, that more people are choosing to not believe any one interpretation of their experience and that they're coming away with a, a, a better ability to, uh, to see a, a, a pluralism of, of possibilities. Um, I think that is still 
possible and and is true in some cases and and a uh, uh, famous science fiction writer philip k dick i think is one a good example and i think whitley streber is an example of that somebody who has entertained a wide variety of interpretations of their experience and i know streber is still and always will be a controversial figure uh who, that people have very strong feelings about but um um i i but but i recognize that I that you know I was I was saying I was seeing what I wanted to believe and that is that I wanted there to be some more positive outcome for people potentially and and I I do think it's a potential there and but and and it's not like I was saying anything that hadn't been said before again John Keel had been saying you know decades earlier uh and and even in uh Valet too that that um you know People obviously uh, are going to reflect on these strange experiences through the lens of of their their own belief systems and the the enculturated uh, reality that they grew up in. And uh, no matter how intellectual or uh, educated or highly intelligent they might be, um, they're they're more often than not going to. They may say, "Oh well, I don't really think it was. It might have been aliens, but I don't know." But you know, there's probably in their heart uh, something that they that they maybe uh, feel more strongly in tune with as as a belief. Um, and I and I so I think in some ways I was deluding myself to to be so optimistic. Um, but what I guess I learned also is just how widespread I think this phenomena is. And and um, I was going to invoke earlier, you know, when talking talking about the dangers of, of my lab experiencers and, and the potential for manipulating uh, people like that into uh, acts of violence. I mean, it was another uh, uh, one of, one of Keel's books mentioned like, you know, what if these uh, what if all these people who've had experiences and, and he was the one that coined, I think the phrase silent contact the idea that there's masses of people that are having this experience and never talking about it. And again, this is something that Valet talks about, like the stranger, the experience, the less likely it is to be reported. Um, uh, because especially when it doesn't fit like, Oh, abductions look like this. Well, my experience wasn't like that. And so they're even less likely to report it. But this idea that Keel kind of, said like well what if one day these people are all turned on and suddenly we've got you know a thousand uh you know shooters from bell towers you know um far-fetched and keel was no stranger to spinning oh. a good yarn i mean yes. he's he a journalist right uh, <laughs> not a scientist um but um I, it, it, I, I found uh, that there were people from all walks of life in, in these groups, uh, teachers, politicians, um, uh, just blue collar, white collar, you know, uh, um, but what, what perhaps what I always felt was a, an area that we could look at for more research into the future and which was done by uh, as inspired other research was like, where are all the black abductees? Where, I mean, okay, granted, you know, the quintessential uh, interracial couple case, and yes, there are, uh, there are some uh, uh, other uh, cases of, of African-American abductees, and yes, this phenomenon is experienced all around the world, but um, uh, where are the blind abductees? Where are, you know, and, and uh, there's a Professor Wham, uh, Carol Matthews wrote her dissertation on uh, on black abductees and the and and and, and the uh, in, in importance of race in uh, discussing all of these this stuff. But I know we're pretty much right at the end of the. And there's so much more I need to ask you. <laughs> Dang it! So I'll just have to have you back. Okay. Again, and it's not going to be four years. Okay. I'm just saying. I'm throwing that out there because that's it's you know that I mean. So much has happened yeah. in the past four years for both of us, and 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 I'm I'm. It's nice to talk to you, and I'm sorry that you've gone through the struggles that you've gone through, and I really hope that you can get a good place to put 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 the archive because I think it's it's important, and for me to have things that are regional or to have different places for people to go and do research is is really critical. 
And so I, I commend what you do. And I also really respect the fact that you um, actually encourage and you want to have, you know, open lines of communication with other archivists and you want it to network. That's really cool. I'm, I, I look forward to working with you and hopefully someday I can get down there to see what you have. And then someday you can get, get up to Utah and, and, you know, see all the wonderful things here. You know, in the, meantime. You know the phrase, I'll show you mine. Oh. Show me yours. <laughs> with all due respect <laughs> absolutely no it's just it's so great to talk to you and again there's you you have i need to, you just need to come back that's all i'm going to say okay okay thank you well, thank, and so you where record. i mean where are the best places that people can find you right now uh anomalyarchives.org that's a-n-o-m-a-l-y archives.org and uh, my personal website smileslewis.com Okay. Thank you so much. Your pleasure. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend. You too. I uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Take care. So everyone, again, thanks for a wonderful show. And I want to thank everybody in chat for, and Steve, thanks for the nice comment. Uh, great conversation tonight. So smiles. I, again, I appreciate having him here. Please make sure you check out the wonderful work that he is doing. And also go to expandingfrontiersresearch.org to check out our latest blog. Again, we are digging into things and we are doing grammar requests. We're doing a lot of investigative uh, research to put things forward to the public on a, on a wide variety of topics. I look forward to next week, instead of being on Friday with the show, it'll be on Saturday night at 5 p.m. And I'll be interviewing Greg Long, who just completed a book on Kenneth Arnold. So that will be great. I haven't had Greg on for many, many years. So that will be fun to have him on. So next show is Saturday night. But I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe. Thanks, Peter. Thank you, Mario, as always. And you guys are the best. So take care. We'll catch you next week.